Look, for long-term fat loss success, walking is superior to running. All right. Ooh, I like yeah, that. I know. I like that a lot. I had people's heads just spun yeah. right now when I said that. Here well, we you go, go, cardio people. I like that because it's also um, it's the opposite of what I thought and said to clients for the first probably five plus years of being ten a trainer. years for me. Yeah, maybe ten. Easily. Maybe ten. I was trying yeah. to be nice to myself. Maybe I was thinking five to eight somewhere <laughs> in there, but really it might have been ten. And you know, I, I've shared on the podcast that you know clients would fill out that form, the Park Q, right? And they and one of the questions in there was always, you know, what do you do for a form of exercise right now? And inevitably, at least one of every three people would say, oh, well, my husband and I, we walk every yeah, day. And you'd scoff. I would. Same. I would, I would totally. Even breaking a sweat. You know? I, I would totally say that, they, oh, it's minimal amount of calories we're burning and that's insignificant to what we need to do if we mm -hmm. want to lose 20 pounds and would totally like shit all, all over their walking. Now, the irony in that is fast forward, you know, 20 years or 15 years later from that, uh, me coaching somebody now. And they and they come in and they say, Adam, I'm I'm not doing anything really, and I want to lose all this weight, and I want this, that, that. I'm willing to come in seven days a week. I, the the stuff that I tell them now is like, okay, all I want you to do is start with walking. Mm -hmm. So it's like the exact opposite of how I thought, uh, you know, 20 years yeah. ago. So let's be clear. First, let's put aside the performance effects of exercise. Obviously, if you're looking for stamina and endurance, athletic performance, running is going to be better. So let's put that aside for a second. What are the what are the one of the, I guess, pluses or advantages of running over walking is it burns more calories per time being spent. This is totally true. So if you do 30 minutes of walking versus 30 minutes of running, you will burn more calories running. Okay, but that's where the pros end. Here are the negatives. Most people don't know how to run. And I don't mean most people can't run. I mean most people don't run properly. It's a skill. And most people stop running right around the age of 12 or at the latest, maybe when they pl stop playing college sports. And so they decide they, you know, lace up my running shoes. I'm going to go start going running now. It's been, you know, 10, 15, 20 years since I ran. And their form and technique is off. They have muscle imbalances and, uh, and just issues with their technique and form. Mm -hmm. And add to that, people run not to learn how to run or to run well, but rather they run to fatigue when they decide to go running. So one of the worst things you could do for your form and technique, if it's already bad, it's to do it to fatigue, and it's no wonder why running is the number one form of activity uh, in relationship to injuries. It's the most it, you will produce the most injuries with running versus yeah, you other run forms flat of footed. You have bad form. Like this is going to impact your joints way more than people realize. Yes, and it's just like that repetitive stress. It really adds up, especially if over time you know you're you got to consider like arthritis and things that are going to come as a result of that. Yeah. Now, in contrast. Most people have not forgotten how to walk. Most people still walk every single day. We haven't become Wally yet, so maybe 20 years from now it'll be different. But people still walk. So if someone goes to walk for activity, we're not so worried about form, technique, you know, balance, muscle imbalances. You can walk because you walk all the time. So there's that right there. Here's the second con of running. You typically need to change your workout clothes or put on some workout clothes. You're going to sweat. It's not something you could just do in the middle of the day and then go to a meeting because it's not as convenient. Um, walking is extremely convenient. I can do it any time of the day. Don't need to change my clothes. I go out, I go for a walk, I come back. Super easy. So it's far easier to inject into your everyday life. And this plays a huge role in long-term consistency. This is by far the biggest, uh, I would say the most impactful factor with consistency is how easy can I inject this into my everyday life? And it's easy to do a 10 to 15 minute walk after breakfast, lunch, and dinner, which could come out to 30 to 45 minutes of extra activity. Not as easy to go do a 15 minute run after breakfast, lunch, and dinner, especially if you're at work or you got other obligations. Well, it, it's very much so uh, what is it, Aesop's Fables, right? That's mm. uh, Tortoise in the Hare. Isn't that where that, yeah. came, isn't that where it came from? It is. Right? So it, it's very much so that, right? Like uh, the rabbit comes out and gets way ahead of the turtle, but what ends up happening, the turtle wins the race, right, to ruin the... He burns himself out. Right, and so I, I just think that that applies to real life uh, uh, many times, and that it's not just with cardio and exercise. I think a lot of times we 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 ride off that the motivation and the, the energy and the hype, mm -hmm. and we make our short-term decision based off of that current state that we're in, and, you know, theoretically, yeah, I'm going to run three or four yeah. days a week or every day, and that's going to get me to my goal. And maybe the first couple of weeks you stick to it, but then life hits you. And then the sustainability of that is just unrealistic, aside from all the points you bring up, too, yeah. which is the injuries and all and how inconvenient it is. 
but it just it's not sustainable for the no. average person. And I know, by the way, every time we do something like this where we talk about running, we always piss off a you know fraction of the audience. And the fraction of the audience that we always piss off are the people that love to run. And I'm who not, run well. I'm not speaking to you. Yes. Yeah. So I, I just want to make that clear that if you enjoy running and it's therapeutic for you and you're a good runner with good mechanics and you don't, you're not suffering from chronic pain and it's meditative for you and you're, and you've been consistently, I ain't talking to you. Keep doing it. Yep. I'm all, if I got a client, if I, you hired me and you said that to me, I would not say stop running. No, we're I wouldn't work with what you got. Yeah. I wouldn't tell a client that, No. but if I have a client who comes in who is not doing anything for exercise and they want to lose weight, I am not going to suggest that to that no, person. No. That is not a, I, I don't think it is a smart strategy for over 90% of the population. No, and it's so, not a long term strategy. It requires a lot of effort, work, and coaching to get good at running if you're not somebody that's been running since you were a child, which is essentially what's required to maintain the skill. Now, to be clear, humans did evolve to run. And we're amazing runners when done properly, but we lose that skill and nobody treats it like a skill. Like I know very little, very few people. We, we also evolved to throw a spear. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so how many fucking people can throw a spear? Exactly. So I know, I know a very <laughs> few people yeah. who decide I'm going to go running and then say, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to really practice running. I'm going to hire a coach. I'm going to learn how to run properly. I'm going to look at my biomechanics. Nobody does that. They say, I'm going to start running to work out, lace up their shoes and they go run until they're tired. And the entire time, especially as fatigue sets in, technique and form is absolutely terrible. I remember when this first really uh, hit me. I was going hiking and I saw runner after runner pass me up. And you know, I'm, I'm a trainer, so it's hard for me not to notice biomechanics. And as people pass by, I'm like, oh my God, pronation. Whoa, really bad supination. Anterior pelvic tilt. Oh my God, his shoulders are forward. Oh, I could see all these injuries. And then there was the rare runner who ran by me that looked like a gazelle like they looked like they they were running perfectly and it mm -hmm. looked flawless and painless and it dawned on me like that's a skill just like any other skill and unless you're going to treat it like a skill which by the way there's a there's a long learning curve if you haven't run consistently well for years it's going to take you a good year of practice of skill acquisition of correcting muscle imbalances and mobility work and all that stuff to be able to do it Walking doesn't have that walk that that learning. Your average curve. person can't even sit with good posture. Yes, totally. <laughs> it's it's what are we talking about? You know, now we got to like get out there and run and do something like super strenuous like that when I can't even hold myself in good posture. Yep. So it's you just have to consider what the very average person, your everyday average person, really looks like in their daily habits and and rituals. And so that's why we're speaking more in that direction. Yeah, and and the problem is when people make the comparison. They're not using uh, realistic real-world context. So when they do the comparison, they say, running for 30 minutes builds this much VO2 max, burns this many calories. Walking for 30 minutes does this and burns this many fewer calories. Therefore, running is better. But when you look at real-world context, uh, injury, risk, um, you know how long it takes to build the skill of what you're trying to do, how easy it is to inject into your daily life, what, it, how long people tend to stay consistent, doing each activity, when you all add all of that up, which is the real world, because the other stuff doesn't matter, it's what actually happens in the real world, walking is superior. When I got clients to walk instead of encouraging people to run, which is what I did early on, yeah. people got way better results because they didn't hurt themselves, they were consistent, and it was easy. It's easy. It's like, something you can build on. I could, we, we could pause the podcast right now. I could go for a 15-minute <clears throat> walk, come back, and I'm okay. If I go for a 15-minute run, and I come back. I got a lot. I'm sweating. Maybe breathing. I'm, it's not appropriate to do throughout the day for most people. So to me, that's the best. The best argument is that is the is the consistency piece. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. The in, you know scaring somebody about injuries and there's going to be always a percentage of people that's like, oh, I don't have any pain when I run. I feel just fine. Or well, but I'll just go do the elliptical or the stairmaster, and that doesn't bother me. But the idea of selling somebody on building walks into their into their lifestyle, I think, is just more realistic to maintain that long term. And to your point, Justin, it's very easy to kind of scale up. I would always start off with yep. this, hey, go for a 30-minute walk with there. you and your spouse after dinner every night is a great. And what ends up happening is they start to do something, and they they like that. And it's like, yeah. oh, this becomes a part of my routine now. 
to Sal's point. Mm -hmm. I don't got to change my clothes. I want to do something a little more intense. Yeah, maybe on the weekends, and I start to extend those those walks to two hour hikes where we go somewhere Mm -hmm. and uh, somewhere beautiful and 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 get more calories burned. But it's really just it's it's changing the lifestyle, and I think that was and the behaviors around that. So I think that's the thing. And when you add all that up, you get a greater real world fat loss effect from walking and better health effect from walking. Um, You're still, of course, with running, you're going to build more endurance, more stamina, more athletic performance, which is fine if that's what you're looking for. But most people are like, look, I just want to be fit and healthy. I definitely want to have improved fitness and performance, but I'm not looking to go too crazy. I want to be lean. I want to have good health. I don't want to have any pain. And when you look at it in that through that lens, Walking is just so so amazing. And also, by the way, when you look at the longest living people in the world, what they all have in common, there's a few things that they have in common, but one of them is just daily activity. It's not even daily hardcore activity. It's just daily yeah. activity. It's the 90-year-old fisherman in Sardinia that, you know, goes out on his boat and fishes and walks, you know, and walks up the 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 hill to get the yeah, berries the, the and the farmer kind of that works their land, you know. Yes, it's that kind of stuff. So this is what you need to consider and it's important to consider all of this when you're looking to improve your fitness. Look at your goals and say what's realistic, what's actually going to stick because uh, you know, you might burn 25% less calories walking, but if you walk consistently every single day versus a spotty record with running, it's going to be more effective and that's just uh, the bottom line. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.